morning. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on what part of the okay, world you're in. I'll talk to you later. Well, I'm in Dubai still, so it is uh, 8 p.m., <laughs> evening right? evening in Dubai. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very... It's morning where I am. Yeah, yeah. Very nice to have you with us, Roy. Thank you. Um, Roy Hunter has a wonderful topic for us today. It's selling success to the subconscious. Now, yeah, we need to sell something, like we need to sell to small children when we want them to do something, right? <laughs> so um, just a few words, and let me just read here what I have so I'm sure I don't miss anything. So Roy Hunter is a published author and hypnosis trainer, recognized all over the world, and really people know him all over the world. Roy was originally trained by Charles Tebbets, who was the pioneer of parts therapy and a pioneer of client-centered hypnotherapy. And Charles Tebbett asked him to continue his work for him. And that's a really big honor. Roy's highly praised textbooks are used at hypnosis schools all around the world. His books on spiritual hypnosis includes contributions by over two dozen hypnosis professionals from all around the world. He has given lectures and workshops in over 20 countries, and here you are again today. Roy has re received numerous awards through the years, including lifetime achievement from three different organizations. He was inducted into the International Hypnosis Hall of Fame for his written contributions to hypnotherapy and is a life diplomat of IMDHA and APHP. That's a lot. And I am very, very honored to have you here with us, Roy. So without further ado, I will turn the camera to you. I will turn over to you. And I am sure that everybody will really, really enjoy that session today. Thank Lots you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you are located on uh, our beautiful planet. It's an honor to teach. It always has been, and that's uh, an honor I'm very grateful for, and I don't take lightly. The topic I want to talk about today is uh, the approach that I have used more often than any other approach in all my years of hypnotherapy, dating back to 1983. I call it the benefits approach, and I also call it selling success to the subconscious, because basically, when a client sees me for habit control or motivational issues, such as weight control or uh, smoking cessation or sales motivation, uh, because of my sales background in my younger years, I've seen quite a few clients over the decades for sales motivation as well. I use the same approach that professional salespeople use. It's important to identify the benefits because if we try to sell price to a potential client or potential customer, that's a good way to turn somebody off. I, for one, do not like to be high pressured. And the subconscious, which is our inner child, resents willpower. So if we try to force ourselves to go on another diet, how many clients do you know who eat, drink, and be merry today for tomorrow we diet? So I have found out that the best approach to help people have uh, the highest probability of success is to help them identify the benefits. And for all my 38 years in the profession, way back in 1983, I started identifying it by saying, uh, we are all tuned in to WIIFM. These are the call letters for what's in it for me. So that inner child wants to know if the conscious mind wants to quit smoking, or if the conscious mind wants to uh, develop good eating habits to overcome an undesired habit, what's in it for that inner child? It's not just going to accept the decision made by the conscious mind because the doctor said, uh, you need to get rid of 30 pounds, or because the doctor said, it's time for you to quit smoking, otherwise you might lose your health. Granted, occasionally people are scared into doing something, but uh, concepts 
that Charles Tebbets taught, which I think are incredibly value, uh, valuable. One, imagination is a language of the subconscious, not logic. Whenever imagination and willpower are in conflict, imagination usually wins. A good way to illustrate that is um, if you had a three foot wide plank, 100 feet long stretched across an empty parking lot and somebody offered you $10,000 to walk across that plank without stepping off, no problem. I have 100% confidence I would collect that uh, money by walking across that plank. Clear day, no wind, no rain, no uh, snow, no breeze. Take that same plank on a perfect calm day, stretch it across two 50-story buildings in uh, downtown city. Now what happens to the confidence if the penalty for stepping off is falling to your death uh, 50 stories to the ground? The confidence goes out the window. And that's because instead of imagining getting to the other side, the average person would imagine stepping off and indeed run a risk of falling off the plank. I don't use that uh, metaphor as often uh, now as I did my first 10 to 15 years in the profession, but I found it quite effective when I've used it. I only use it still occasionally, but I prefer to keep it as positive as possible. So basically, during the intake, my first session is a progression forward in time so that the client can basically fantasize the benefits of his or her uh, success. And that's why I call it selling success to the subconscious. People, for example, if they're going to buy a car, they want to sit in it. They want to drive it, or at least one similar to it, before they decide, yeah, that's the make and model for me. They want to get their uh, senses involved in it. See the car, feel how it handles, listen to the stereo system and or the engine or both. They want to drive it out in traffic, get a feel for how it handles. They're not just going to walk into a car dealership and buy something because the salesman says, okay, you can afford $200 a month. Uh, this is what you can get for 200 a month. It just doesn't work that way. The inner child does not like to be forced into doing things, which is why Sometimes it's difficult to get children to do what we want them to do. Especially, well, when my children were little, the hypnotic influence of the TV was a major problem because um, if they were sitting in front of the TV, literally hypnotized by the cartoons, because imagination is the language of the subconscious. And I said, you forgot to clear uh, the table and put your dirty plates in the kitchen. It was ignored. I had to literally stand between the child and the TV set to get my child to go take his or her dirty dishes, put them in the kitchen. And the reason I say his or her is I had two boys and twin girls. Can't believe they're middle aged now. Time to, oh, the years fly by. As I'm sure any senior citizens in this interview can tell you. Anyway, the second major concept Charles Tebbets taught about the subconscious, which I believe is extremely important to be aware of, is that emotion is the motivating power of the subconscious. We do things when we have an emotional desire to do them, whether it's a positive emotion or a negative emotion. And while negative emotions might make us more vulnerable to making mistakes, Negative emotions don't always guarantee a negative result, just as positive emotions don't always guarantee a positive result. For example, two people dating, but not in a relationship, can have a very positive emotion on a date, and yet have a negative end to the relationship. And that's evidenced by the uh, high rate of divorces all over the globe. Likewise, a person can be struggling 
with a particular issue, just as uh, many smokers have struggled with the desire to quit smoking, and then through the powerful emotion of fear, when a doctor says, if you don't quit now, uh, your lungs are already uh, losing their health. So they can literally be scared into quitting. Likewise, if they don't have an emotional desire to quit, one of my first failures with a smoker was uh, after he got into deep somnambulism and I started giving him non-smoking suggestions, he brought himself up out of deep hypnosis and said, this won't work. And I said, why not? He said, the only reason I'm here is because my doctor said, well, uh, go see a hypnotist. You've got to quit smoking. And he said, I would rather die within a year than live another 30 years without ever taking another drag on a cigarette. Now, that was a shocking statement to me. I had only been in the profession months, but that taught me the importance of doing a very thorough intake to find out what a person's hot buttons were. And he could not get emotionally involved in the benefits because it wasn't important to him how long he lived. It was more important for him to do what he emotionally wanted to do. Now, quite possibly if I had been a master of parts therapy, then I could have used parts therapy on him. So while I'm known for parts therapy, Probably two thirds of my clients throughout my uh, almost four decades of practice have never experienced parts therapy because oftentimes a benefits approach is sufficient to help people become motivated to achieve the desired result. And the benefits have to be personal. So when I say what's in it for you, I list the client's benefits by asking him or her to state them out loud common benefits for uh, becoming a non-smoker are um, clear throat and lungs. Sometimes a client will say, well, it won't be so hard to breathe anymore. And I'll say, well, it's important to imagine clear throat and lungs rather than imagine your difficulty breathing because you want to imagine your success, not the failure. So I'll transfer the benefits into the affirmative. So if a client says, uh, I won't smell of smoke anymore, I'll say, oh, clean persona or clean environment or fresh air in your living room. And then I ask the client to list anywhere from three to seven benefits that are very important to them. After the client lists his or her desired benefits, such as more energy, better health, longer life expectancy, then I will use hypnosis and progress the client forward in time and ask him or her to imagine each benefit. I'll go through the benefits one by one with special emphasis on the one that the client tells me is the most important benefit. And then I'll say words to the effect of imagine total appreciation and enjoyment of that benefit in ways that are so satisfying, you feel as though you already enjoy success. And indeed, your success has already begun because you have chosen the benefits of being a non-smoker or the benefits of being at your ideal weight. And the terms are so easy. You simply accept that you have the power of choice, the freedom to make wise decisions about your health and your eating habits, or the freedom to take one deep breath of fresh air and think the word relax at times you used to light up. So instead of being a slave to your former slave master, your fair weather friend, the cigarette, you can enjoy your new friend freedom, freedom to put your mind on whatever you choose to think about, whatever you choose to imagine. So instead of being a slave to yesterday's urges, you enjoy today's new friend, freedom, to put your mind on whatever you choose. And because you enjoy your benefits so, so gratefully, it's easy to either forget to remember yesterday's urges or remember to forget yesterday's slave master, the fair weather friend. That's an example of uh, how I weave in the hypnotic suggestions about before 
I give the suggestions to pay the price for the desired habit that they wish to overcome. I have the subconscious get fully immersed in fantasizing the benefits. So I have them uh, in the intake when they list the benefits, when they tell me the WIIFM list, I'll say, imagine you've been a non-smoker for one year. What do you get out of it? Or imagine you have already been at your ideal weight for one year. What are your personal benefits? I ask the client to imagine his or her attitude of gratitude and appreciation. And then after I give the post-hypnotic suggestions for the uh, action plan to get from uh, failure to success, I once again go back and have them imagine the enjoyment of the benefits, the total fulfillment. Now there is a handout that um, I believe Mona can make available. Can, can you make that available? It's called the benefits approach. And it actually has on it, uh, in the handout, it actually shows uh, the page, which I call selling success to your subconscious. Then I have my priority goal is, and there's a blank space where I'll put the client's goal. And then my personal benefits are, and I'll have the client list the personal benefits right on the handout. And I give, uh, I photocopy this for me and I give the client the original. And I'll say, creative daydreaming, find a quiet place and go into self-hypnosis. Vividly daydream total fulfillment, the fulfillment of your goal and make a special effort to imagine all of your personal benefits in ways that please any of your five senses. Imagine your most important benefit or benefits in ways that help you imagine your emotional satisfaction with fulfillment of your goal. Use your imagination with as many of your five senses as possible. Also, imagine enjoying, enjoying is italicized for emphasis, your benefits in ways that are emotionally satisfying and emotionally is also italicized for emphasis. If applicable, imagine yourself giving thanks to God or a higher power for the realization of your desires. Then in bold, print, I have remember, imagination is the language of the subconscious and emotion is the motivating power of the mind. Combine both together for a more powerful meditation. And then I have uh, at the bottom, original copyright 1994 and then revised 2000 and 2018, photocopying permitted as is with no editing. Then I have my website at the bottom and I ask the client to take that home with him or her and uh, when they listen to the uh, uh, recording of the meditation i ask them to fantasize the benefits and to do this at least once a day for the first week not every client will do it once a day but i have found that uh, the homework assignment uh, greatly increases the success rate results i spent five years surveying my success rate in the uh, late 1980s. And I found out that um, over 50% of my clients who saw me for smoking cessation were able to succeed without the need of parts therapy or regression therapy to resolve inner conflicts or to discover core causes of problems. And one of the uh, aspects of hypnosis that I divulge in the intake is that hypnosis is a guided meditation, in other words, a guided self-hypnosis. And it's important to have an emotional desire to succeed because if the client is only seeing me because his or her spouse or physician said, go see a hypnotist, until that client chooses to change, the client is wasting time and money seeing me. And, um, I believe in doing for the client what I would want done if the roles were reversed. So if a client is not really ready to change and is just paying uh, me for sessions so uh, that he can go back and tell his wife, I tried hypnosis and hypnosis didn't work. That's not good for the client. It's not good for uh, me. 
nor for the credibility of our profession. Uh, back when I was seeing 20 to 25 clients a week, over half of my business uh, came from referrals from satisfied clients. So I had a fairly high success rate. And I used to call my clients at one month, six months, 12 months, and 18 months because I wanted to know my long-term success rate. Approximately one third of my clients needed either parts therapy or regression therapy to discover the core causes of subconscious resistance because the benefits approach alone it will not help all the people all the time. But I find that uh, the good aspect of using the benefits approach is on a client's first session. It's a very enjoyable session and first impressions are lasting, especially for a client who's never experienced hypnosis before. And also the benefits approach, you would say is non-threatening. Occasionally I've had people in the profession who take my workshop and say, oh, regression is so powerful, I use it with all the clients. You can turn a client off by using regression on a first visit because a client goes back home and a uh, spouse says, how to go, honey? And the client says, oh, I uh, remembered the time back in third grade when the school bully beat me up on the way home. Uh, that's not a very good first impression of hypnosis. So I almost never use regression on a first session, even if uh, it's necessary, as it often is for uh, fear of flying or fears and anxieties. I want that first session to be pleasant and enjoyable. If it's habit control or motivation, I'll use the benefits approach. We're tuned into WIIFM. If it's for uh, confidence or uh, fear of flying, other fears and anxieties, I'll help the client learn the peaceful place meditation to manage stress so that the client's first impression of hypnosis is pleasant. Because meditation can be great, it can also be very scary if we are imagining or remembering negative emotional experiences. So um, any of you who are professional hypnotists, first impressions are lasting. Keep that in mind. Uh, one of the rare times I'll do a regression on a first session is if a client specifically asks for it which sometimes happens because occasionally I'll, my client is a hypnotherapist who might fly hundreds of miles to see me or uh, ask me for a session at a hypnosis convention. But for uh, John and Mary Q client who is experiencing hypnosis for the first time, the benefits approach is a great approach. And people can identify with the concept of the conscious mind being like the salesperson and the inner child not wanting to buy a hard sell. So that's um, important to let the client know that uh, imagination will usually win out over willpower. So the aspect of not just identifying the benefits but getting emotionally involved in the benefits provides that extra emotional energy because when you have an emotional desire to reject positive hypnotic suggestions, that's when we need parts therapy or a variation or regression uh, to help the subconscious reveal the core cause of the emotional desire to reject the suggestions or the inner conflicts, etc. But oftentimes, the positive emotions are enough to overcome the negative emotions. And I realize there are other approaches to help people manage weight or quit smoking. So I don't claim that the benefits approach is the only way to do that or the best way to do it, but it has passed the test of time, dating all the way back to my first few months in the profession. And uh, nothing speaks louder than successes. I found that my long term success rate at helping clients with weight loss was over 50%, which at the time I wasn't happy with until I had a client who owned a weight loss center. And she told me that the national success rate for long-term control over weight was only 3%. Wow. 
I was absolutely shocked. She said her company that she was a franchise owner of advertised a 90% success rate, but she said that's based on how many people go through the series uh, of consultations and stick to the plan. And she said it doesn't measure those who drop out, but she said 90% of the people who stick to the plan will reach their goal weight. But she said what the company doesn't tell you is their um, 50% guarantee that if uh, you uh, gain the weight back, you can come back through at half price. She said the majority of the company's income is from the half pricers. And she said over half of their clients gain back more than the weight that they lose. That was very shocking to me. And she uh, said that my 50% success rate long-term was uh, phenomenal. But that's also because clients get a good first impression. They love getting involved in the benefits and they're more likely to see me if they do backslide and have subconscious resistance, in which case I'll use parts therapy or whatever technique is appropriate to persuade the subconscious to reveal the core cause of why the subconscious is rejecting the positive suggestions that the client is investing in. So uh, after having her as a client, I wasn't so disappointed in only having a 50% success rate with uh, weight management. And also I was measuring on how many clients got to their goal weight because many clients revealed to me that they wanted to get rid of 40 pounds, but felt good enough when they got rid of 30 pounds that they decided it was easier to maintain um, a weight that was 10 to 15 pounds heavier than their ideal weight than it was to be at their college level weight. That's the way one woman put it to me. She said, uh, it's not realistic for me to be a, uh, my college weight anymore. And my husband can either love me for who I am uh, or find a new wife. I was kind of surprised when she put it that way to me. <laughs> so uh, it's best if a person wants to get rid of excess weight, decide what weight you would be comfortable at emotionally because not only do you get to enjoy the benefits of the goal that you choose, you're also the one that has to pay the price. So count the cost, identify the benefits and then decide what price am I willing to pay? Do I really need to be at 150 pounds or will I be comfortable at 170 pounds? Only you can determine that. Naturally, if your doctor insists that you go back to 150, then uh, that's a different matter. And one of the most unusual benefits approach weight loss clients I ever saw was a lady who wanted to get rid of 20 pounds and she already looked slim. I didn't quite understand. And something I rarely have asked a client all my years in the profession, I asked her, I said, well, um, do you mind if I ask you why you need to get rid of 20 pounds? You already look uh, like you're at your ideal weight. She said, I'm a professional ballet dancer and uh, I need to get rid of 20 pounds according to my ballet coach in order to be able to uh, do better twirls. Well, <laughs> that was her sole benefit but it was a very important one because uh, that was her career and she loved it and she got rid of the 20 pounds. <laughs> but uh, that was a rather unusual case. And then I remember one very unusual case uh, about 20 years ago, between 15 and 20 years ago, I can't remember the exact dates. Uh, this man came in, said he wanted to quit smoking and I had him list all the benefits. And then he said, actually, he said this five minutes into the intake, I'm an atheist, so you better dare not bring the name of God or anything spiritual into these sessions. Since my client's my employer, if he didn't want anything spiritual or metaphysical, um, he was my employer. So I stayed within the framework of what he asked me to do. 
he got involved in the benefits. He really loved the approach. He came back for the second session because for smokers, since stress uh, causes more backsliding than all other reasons combined, I learned that during my five-year survey. Uh, I won't accept a client for smoking cessation unless he or she agrees to three sessions. One session for the benefits approach, one session to learn self-hypnosis to manage stress, which is like insurance, reducing the risk of backsliding. And then the third session is to either reinforce that the uh, success is permanent, long-lasting, or if there are problems, look for the problems. Well, when this uh, smoker comes back for his third session, he said, I don't know why my subconscious is rejecting all those good suggestions you gave me. He said, the stress management technique is working great. He said, uh, I, I love your approach, but he said, something just doesn't make sense. And I don't know what the conflict is. So obviously he was a candidate for part therapy. Uh, that part of him that motivated him to smoke would not negotiate with the part that wanted him to quit smoking. There was a part of him that motivated him to invest his time and money on various programs, but all the programs, including my approach, or the benefits approach, failed. So when the two parts refused to negotiate with each other, I did what I usually do. I asked for a, a neutral part that can provide some words of wisdom to help us get past this impasse. And that part wanted to be called higher self. Higher self told the other two parts what to do and within five minutes his inner conflict was resolved and accepted by uh, the inner mind. So when I emerged him from hypnosis, my first words were what I usually do after a successful part therapy session. I said, isn't this amazing stuff? He said, amazing isn't the half of it. I said, what do you mean? He said, higher self was a spiritual part. And if I have a spiritual part, that must mean there's a spiritual realm. Logic dictates if there's a spiritual realm, there must be a God or a higher power. And because it came from his mind, he was okay with it. If I had called out a higher power part, he probably would have brought himself out, out of hypnosis and remained a smoker. But because it came from his mind, he was okay with it, but I think it was pretty amazing that a man enters my office, an atheist, and without my giving any specific suggestions, he leaves my office three sessions later believing in God. Isn't that so, a mind fascinating? Yes, it is, but apparently he was ready for that. So that's one of the uh, case summaries I put in my uh, uh, 2016 book, The Art of mm -hmm. Spiritual Hypnosis. Uh, and that book, by the way, uh, has contributions by over two dozen well-known hypnotherapy trainers and authors from around the world. And one of the people on this video, Beryl Komar, thank you for contributing a case summary to that book. Yay. <laughs> Roy, we have a question here. Hello, um, Hi, Roy. Quite hello. Interesting, interesting, highly. Um, my question was, okay, using the benefit method, does it work with um, with extremely obese people? We're talking about like 60, 70 K or like 90 pounds um, extras uh, due to emotional stigma and um, traumatic, um, you know, like history of, of traumas. Sometimes they, they go through self mutilation. Um, but you were saying you will not go into regression um, as a as a first um, shot let's say and um, let's say on the second um, session wouldn't you go through um, regression therapy go regression to cause I mean rather than um, do the benefit thing or um, what, what do you think what first of all I want to validate your comment by saying when a person is obese and my definition of obese is approximately 50 pounds or more, yeah. I know without having to tell it to the client, I know in the intake that there's a high probability that I will have to use either regression therapy or parts therapy or both. But my reason for starting with the benefits approach is it increases the motivating desire for the client to come 
through the follow-up sessions. And it also leaves a good first impression. First impressions are lasting. And it's a, especially important if that client has never experienced hypnosis before, that he or she have an enjoyable trance trip on the first visit to my office. Because if I started out with regression, um, she could go home and husband says, how'd it go, honey? Oh, I remembered back when uh, I was in junior high school and uh, kids called me fatty puss. I'm giving a specific example of a term that came out in one of my sessions years ago with uh, an obese woman. And that, that might be something that would uh, discourage a person from coming back. Whereas they're more likely to come back if they had an enjoyable first trans trip. But usually on the second session, whether, I, whether or not I do parts or regression on the second session would depend on the combination of things. One, does the client eat as a stress coping technique? Many, but not all, but many overweight clients use food as a stress coping technique. So in the second session, I teach them uh, self-hypnosis for managing stress. I call the approach what to do when your buttons get pushed. And then I will wait until the third session before I uh, start, start looking for subconscious causes, whether by parts or regression. And quite a few, not all, but quite a few obese clients that I've worked with through the years have needed both parts therapy and regression therapy uh, and several sessions. So when a client is obese, I usually ask them in the intake to agree to at least five or six sessions. Yes. I'll let them know it takes time to reprogram your subconscious into um, the mindset where it becomes uh, automatic for you to make the right choices. This approach has helped many thousands of clients in my uh, three and a half plus decades hypnotherapy practice. And oftentimes people might not be able to easily access uh, a hypnosis professional, although now in the, in, in the days of the internet, uh, there are many who will do sessions via Skype or Zoom. But uh, if you want to attempt to do it on your own before uh, investing in professional hypnosis, just take a blank sheet of paper, put on a top, uh, what your goal is, and then W-I-I-F-M, those are the call letters for what's in it for me. Then imagine that you've already succeeded a year ago and make a list of your personal benefits, the ones that you can get emotionally involved with. Then meditate, put on some gentle background music, or uh, if you prefer to meditate in silence, that's acceptable, and just fantasize that you already are enjoying your benefits and imagine your attitude of gratitude, imagine your emotional satisfaction and then special emphasis on your most important benefit and imagine that benefit and enjoyment of that benefit so vividly that you feel as though you already enjoy success. That will increase your motivating desire and then you're more likely to either be able to do it on your own or find yourself motivated to seek professional help if necessary. And if any of you who are not hypnosis professionals want to know how to choose a competent hypnotherapist, uh, find out if the person was trained in regression therapy and either parts therapy or one of its variations Variations of parts therapy go in different names, such as ego state therapy, voice dialogue, resource therapy, uh, six step reframe, and there are other uh, similar techniques. But it's basically uh, the concept of, uh, you could put it in layman's terms to a uh, hypnosis professional. Do you know how uh, to discover sources or causes of subconscious resistance 
if my subconscious fails to accept uh, the positive suggestions and see how the person responds. Also, does that person belong to at least one professional hypnosis association? Because most credible hypnosis professionals belong to uh, at least one professional hypnosis association. And there are quite a few of them. Some are more credible than others. Uh, I happen to belong to um, over a dozen because I've been given a number of honorary memberships when I've traveled around the world. But uh, two well-known international organizations are the uh, APHP, which is the Association of Professional Hypnosis and Psychotherapy, which is headquartered in uh, the UK, even though I'm in uh, America on the West Coast at the Pacific Northwest near Seattle. Uh, also, there's the International Medical Dental Hypnotherapy Association. Uh, there are quite a few others. Uh, again, the credibility varies because some have training programs that are only one or two weeks. Others have training programs that last many months. But uh, the important thing is to see someone who not only can give you the positive suggestions to get started, but who will either also be able to give, uh, to use techniques to assist in discovering causes of subconscious resistance, if applicable, or has enough ethics to refer you to a hypnotherapist who does know how to use regression and or parts therapy, uh, if necessary. Uh, this call has been recorded and will be available um, first of all on YouTube and it will be available on my website which is mindyourpower.org but also the people on the call the people who have registered will receive uh, the, the recording of course to listen to it again there was so much information in there Roy so we can listen to it again and I will attach the form to that email so oh, everybody thank you. will have access to that one I wanted to give my website in case anyone is interested in my books or products, www.royhunter.com, R-O-Y-H-U-N-T-E-R.com. And you can find information about hypnosis and uh, about my background. I have some free articles there. Um, you can get uh, my professional books or uh, ones that are more for the general public, such as Mastering the Power of Self-Hypnosis or the Art of Spiritual Hypnosis. Uh, actually, people outside of the USA for the art of spiritual hypnosis are better buying that one on Amazon.com because my publisher won't send that internationally outside of the USA, which saddens me somewhat. But my book's from Crown House. Uh, Crown House Publishing is located in the UK. Mm -hmm. And a number of hypnosis schools use one or more of my Crown House books. And I appreciate uh, the, spending the time with all of you sharing where I'm coming from. And for hypnosis professionals, uh, my strong recommendation is that you practice client-centered hypnosis, which means fit the technique to the client rather than trying to fit the client to your technique because there is no technique that is so good enough that it'll work for all people all the time. My benefits approach has passed the test of time, but it does not work for all the people all the time, which is why it's important that I have uh, been trained in parts therapy and regression therapy to help the people that need those additional techniques when necessary. And I have endeavored in my years of practice to do for the client what I would want done for me if the roles were reversed. And I want to thank all of you for uh, viewing or listening. Uh, whichever, whether you're doing this live or uh, days or weeks after the recording. Thank you. <laughs> Roy, I want to thank you again very much for, um, you know, everything you shared with, with us. It, it was very insightful, a lot of reminders, a lot of new ideas, a lot of information. Um, you can contact Roy for his books, like he said, uh, also for training that Roy does um, and for sessions, right? Yes. Okay. 
And I want to ask all of you to please do your best in these troubled times with the coronavirus. Stay safe, stay healthy.